Medtronic's plan to release a patch pump in the near future is over, at least their main plan. The company had planned to spend $740 million on an acquisition of a South Korean company called EOFlow, the creators of the EO patch tubeless pump. But that's not happening anymore. In a scandal I'm calling EOFlow No Mo. Welcome to Diabet Tech. I'm Justin. I have type 1 diabetes. And on this channel, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management. I've got a podcast that airs on Mondays, and I've got YouTube videos that are all about diabetes news and a main focus on diabetes tech because I think it's so cool. So if you find that interesting, be sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you enjoy it. Um, I've reported a lot on Medtronic and uh, Inslet, who I'll be getting into today, and Tandem, who has a patch pump coming as well. So I'll reference to some of those videos and those interviews, which you should totally check out after watching this. So back in May, I had announced that Medtronic was planning to acquire the company EOFlow, a South Korean company that produces the EO patch. This is a tubeless pump, looks very similar to the Omnipod, and Medtronic was set to bring this to their, their catalog of devices and implement it with their algorithm. This meant that the tubeless pump market was heating up, right? You've got Omnipod, you have Medtronic's new tubeless pump they wanna release. Tandem has a patch pump coming soon, which I talked about them in an interview, you should check it out. And Tandem also is just coming out with the Moby, a super small tubed pump, but that can also adhere to the body similar to a patch pump. But Medtronic is not as close as they thought they would be. The plan is over, there's a lot of drama here. Inslet has made a bunch of accusations that led Medtronic to pull out of the deal. I work with Omnipod on content, uh, but that has no effect on my reporting of the story, my opinions, or anything I say, but it is important to note. All right, let's get into this news. First, let me remind you what the EO patch is. It comes from the company EOFlow of South Korea. It's already available in a bunch of markets around Europe. The battery life of the device is three and a half days, and the company was actually working on a seven-day pump that would be slightly larger. Uh, it is waterproof, very similar to the Omnipod, and it's actually a bit smaller than the Omnipod. Overall, same weight, width, and depth, but height-wise, it's a little bit shorter, which I reported on in my EOFlow announcement video. If you want to learn more about what the EOFlow is, because it, it still exists, just may not be coming to the US, you can go learn more in that video. I'll throw that in the top right corner of this video. EOFlow already submitted their insulin delivery system to the FDA in January for clearance. It also has FDA breakthrough device designation, which means that with that device, they'd kind of get like a fast track through the clearance process. Well, that may not happen. Back in May, Medtronic said that they were going to work diligently to incorporate the EO patch into their line of systems and get their algorithm the 780G algorithm onto the pump, which notably has meal detection technology, which is, from what I hear, pretty ahead of the competition. I actually interviewed Medtronic on a few things. There's two videos. One's all about the 780G system, but one's about the future of Medtronic. And part of that conversation was about this pump. In that video, we talked about future CGMs and meal detection coming from Medtronic. It's a great video to watch to hear about their future plans. I'll throw that in the description so you can check that out next. Now, here's where the drama starts. In August, Inslet filed a lawsuit against EOFlow, claiming its EO patch is strikingly similar to Inslet's Omnipod patch pump. Inslet accused EOFlow of violating three of the patents for its Omnipod patch pump, and that the product designs are, quote, practically identical. Insulate alleges that when EOFlow was founded in 2011, it started out with a patch pump that used a different technology. But in around 2016, quote, EOFlow pivoted and launched a plan to brazenly copy Inslet's Omnipod system. Three former Inslet executives who joined EOFlow were named as defendants. Also a defendant was Inslet's contract manufacturer, Flex. Inslet claims that Flex, the manufacturer, misappropriated trade secrets. A spokesperson for Flex responded via email saying, protecting customer intellectual property is one of our highest priorities. Because this is pending litigation, we will have no further comment. 
In early October, Insulin won a preliminary injunction against EOFlow. A federal judge blocked EOFlow from selling its insulin patch pump. Now for Medtronic's response. In early December, Medtronic officially canceled plans to acquire EOFlow. In an 8K filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, Medtronic says it has exercised its rights to terminate its agreement to acquire EOFlow as a result of multiple breaches on their part. We remain steadfast in our commitment to bringing a differentiated patch pump to market that integrates our most advanced CGM platform and clinically proven meal detection technology algorithm. This is looking like a big win for Insulet. Insulet's got to be a little worried about these other companies coming into their ter territory of the patch pump. Tandem, they have theirs. It's called Siggy. I've reported about it on this channel. I've got videos on that. I'll throw those in the description. I'll also throw one up there. I interviewed Tandem about it. They plan to bring that in 2027. According to that statement, Medtronic is planning to bring a patch pump. And from my inside sources, they did have a plan B, but I can only imagine since they were willing to spend $740 million to get a patch pump, their plans to create one themselves are probably not that close. Um, and I will definitely ask them next time I talk to them, Medtronic, how far off they expect their patch pump to be. The good news for Inslet is this creates cushion room for them to innovate more with Omnipod, make that a more desirable device over Tandem's new patch pump and whatever Medtronic will be cooking up in the kitchen. Although Medtronic's plans for a patch pump are squashed, there still is some exciting innovation happening over there with new technology, including the Simplera CGM. This is a brand new disposable CGM that lasts seven days, a little shorter than the competition, but it is a huge leap in Medtronic's CGM technology. It's a super sleek looking CGM. The Simplera is not a closed loop CGM. It does not talk to pumps. It's meant to be used just to see numbers or to use with Medtronic's smart pen, the InPen, which is also a great device that I've used. There is the Instinct CGM. That is the same form factor as the Simplera, but it does talk to a pump and that would be closed loop. Simplera is with the FDA in the US right now and it already received a CE mark in Europe. I'll actually be seeing the Simplera in person, I believe, when I go to ATTD in Florence in March and I cannot wait to check that out and report on it with a ton of content. Stay tuned for that. What are you most excited for to see with Medtronic? Are you a Medtronic user? Are you like upset about this patch pump? Let me know all of your feels in the comments. Also, if you wanna see more content like this as it drops news, diabetes technology, keep it here on Diabet Tech by subscribing to this channel. Click that bell for alerts because I've got videos dropping all the time. I've got videos and I also have a podcast that airs every Monday. And also give this video a like, that way more people see it. Um, I am so excited to see where the what the future holds for diabetes technology. This is an unfortunate moment. I mean, Omnipod's super happy about it, uh, but I'm excited to see where Medtronic kind of pivots and then also see that Simplera in March. Uh, as always, I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.